Thursday, we Coach, understand. We just a um, closer to us. Just closer. There you go. What did you uh, learn from that? Was that a good productive day to kind of see where you guys are? Well, it was productive. I thought defensive line did a great job of being disruptive, playing on the other side of the line of scrimmage. Um, you know, I, I think we're probably deeper on that side of the ball uh, up front than, than we were a year ago. Still got to have guys take more ownership in the roles, but uh, I like the direction that they're heading. Um, you know, I thought the quarterback play, which everybody's going to be interested in, was uh, was really solid most of the day. Uh, had one turnover. Uh, other than that, they were pretty sound in their decision making. Um, you know, guys had multiple touchdowns on the day. I, I thought they threw the deep ball really well, Brandon in particular, uh, on the deep ball. So um, a ton to learn from. You know, there's a lot of situational football in that. Learn how to play on third downs, learning when to, to pull back on the tempo a little bit. Uh, some coming out situations and some overtime ball. So, um, you know, for our entire football team, but quarterbacks in particular, a lot of things to learn from. What would you say about Quadri's performance in that scrimmage and maybe what stood out from him? I, I thought he was really sound in his decision making uh, and, and fundamentally um, was probably his best day as far as just getting his body in the right position with, with what he's seeing on the other side of the line of scrimmage. He's continued to progress as a young guy inside of our program every phase that we've been in. Um, extremely confident and knowledgeable in what we're doing right now. Where is Brandon Bush? Are you seeing that experience come through a little bit? Yeah, I, I think when you get out in scrimmage situations, he was really comfortable playing inside of the stadium and, you know, the competitive nature of that day, you know what I mean, where you're on the sidelines watching the other guy go and, and try to make a drive, and then how do you respond to it? Uh, when a bad play happens, how do I respond uh, the next play? And, and um, you know, playing that uh, position, and it's true of everybody on the football field, you got to have uh, – you know, a memory that uh, is pretty short. You know what I mean? You got to move on to the next play and, and play that play independently of, of anything that's happened uh, prior. What do you want to see out of those guys for the next few weeks? I, I think we got to be more consistent uh, with our accuracy uh, of the football. Um, for the most part, they've been pretty sound in their decision making with all, all the different looks that we're seeing on the on the other side of the line of scrimmage, but still need to become better uh, as far as that to who our keys are and, and us getting to the right receiver on time with the football. Um, you know, individually, there's little things that they all got to work on. I, I thought for the most part, they handled the tempo with which we play pretty well. Um, I thought, you know, certain parts during the scrimmage, they could have helped increase and, and forced and pushed the tempo. And sometimes that just means getting your five guys moving to the football after a, a big play and, and getting them aligned uh, so you can move on to the next one. Were you pleased with what you saw the Dylan Gabriel in his first time doing it? Yeah, um, yeah, you know, we had scrimmages in the spring, uh, uh, spring game. Uh, he's a different player than he was in the spring. Um, you know, through the first eight days and, and today being the ninth, uh, he's grown in understanding, being able to, to talk back, rewind what he's seen and why he's making a decision. That's really important, I think, at the quarterback position. When they come off sidelines, they can talk you through what their decision-making process was. And uh, as long as it's reasonably sound, then, then, you know, they're putting themselves in a position to be successful. I thought he did a really good job of, you know, plays where it's not right based on, you know, a, a look, a coverage, a pressure, uh, checking and getting us into the right play. And for a young guy, I think that speaks a lot to, to his understanding of what we're doing. How There's challenging has it been for you guys, the coaching staff, when it comes to this competition? These guys have all played kind of the same sort of level, neck and neck. How challenging has that been when you guys are trying to look at I, I think the first thing, uh, we talk about this inside of the, the room, compete within yourself first and foremost. Be positive with the guys that you're competing against inside of the room. At the end of the day, the strength of the position can never be one guy. Uh, last year's an indication of that. Um, push each other, push, your, push yourself to be, become your best. And whenever your opportunity arises, then you're going to put yourself in the best position to go take advantage of it. You know, DJ's opportunities last year were a perfect example of that. If you're waiting until the opportunity comes, then, then you're failing yourself and you're failing the team. Um, they have competed in a positive way. We have a long ways to go um, before they're ready to play at the level that we need them to when we get to our, our opening kickoff. But I really believe that they're going to ultimately get there. Is, is everything the same in the offense for Dylan being left-handed, or are there slight nuances? Yeah, uh, really, there, there's not much difference. Um, you know, something that you do for a right-handed hander, you may have it uh, a left-hand version of it already in your playbook. Um, you know, pretty much everything you do is be able, being able to flip left and right. So uh, there's really not a lot different. When you are calling it for a left-hander, there's subtle uh, differences than uh, than a right-hander. But those are all things that. You know, between each quarterback, there's a difference too. And so when you're calling it, you're calling it to put that uh, that quarterback in the best position uh, to be successful. What is quarterback like from a rushing standpoint? I mean, we see Wimbush. Say that again. From a rushing standpoint, how they are running the ball. Of course, we've seen Wimbush play at Notre Dame before. Uh, just kind of talk about what you yeah, see. Yeah, I, I think that's that, that's the, the hardest element to get a real gauge on. 
while you're practicing. They have red jerseys on. They're not live. They're going to get tapped off. And, and uh, so it's tough to see the hidden yards in the game that those guys are going to be able to pick up with their feet. Um, you know, obviously, we would be different if the quarterbacks were live and, and you're going to run the quarterback uh, with some of the schemes that you do. And ultimately, that puts the numbers in your favor with the loaded box. And, um, when you play 11 on 11. So um, we have an understanding of what all those guys can do, um, but uh, you don't get a chance to see it in these scrimmages. Where are, you, where are you where you guys where you'd like to be on August 10th? I don't know if you're ever where you want to be. Uh, um, <clears throat> I, I, I like this. Uh, our football team, every day that we've gone out on the practice field, they've had great intensity. Um, they've continued to push and get better every single day. Uh, I think our ones and twos have grown exponentially every day. Uh, our young guys are still learning how to, to play, compete, to practice, to focus uh, for the two hours that, that they're out there and ultimately how that transitions uh, into what uh, real live action is underneath the lights. Um, we need some of those young guys to come on, uh, increase our depth. Uh, they're going to have to play roles on special teams and, and offense and defense. Uh, but I do like the mentality, attitude that we have. Um, but you're, you're straining for inches, right? Every guy picks up a couple inches every day. You're moving your football team a lot of distance every day. And uh, we got to stress that, push for that as we continue through training camp before we kick off. What did you take away from the scrimmage regarding your kicking and punting competitions? Um, <clears throat> Nine days in today, right? But but eight days through the scrimmage, um, I th think Dylan's been really pretty consistent uh, in his his field goals. Uh, I like where he's at. Uh, Abar Abarski's been kicking the ball extremely well on his kickoffs in particular. Uh, he's continuing to fight for for the field goal job. Um, the punting competition is real, and and uh, um, you know I, I'd like to get through the next scrimmage before we probably name a guy in in, uh, in that room. You made a comment at the beginning that you thought the defensive line might be deeper than last year. And I know that was a big concern with all the players you lost. I mean, can you expand a little bit more on that and what you've seen from well, the I, I think we've got a lot of guys that are, are playing with speed, playing with good pad level, and using their hands better. Uh, I think they're playing vertically uh, on the line of scrimmage better than we were at this time a year ago. Uh, we're not where we need to be. Um, you know, I think interiorly, um, there's been a lot of strain and competitiveness. Uh, I think you see that on the practice field. We need to continue to develop our depth, our depth on the edges. Uh, I do think we have some young guys that can help us in, inside of uh, this football season for us. So. Just from the clip that uh, was released on Twitter, it looked like Tay Gowan, uh, the cornerback, uh, was out there a lot with the first team and making some plays. What did you see out of him? Uh, Tay, Tay's got great speed. Uh, he's continuing to learn how to play with great technique and focus on every rep and, and, and play it independently of anything else that's gone on. Uh, he's a highly competitive kid, and, and it matters to him. Um, you know, I, I like where he's continuing to grow. Um, but we need to see more out of him fundamentally uh, to get him where he needs to be by kickoff. Are any of these freshmen maybe challenging for uh, playing time? Across the... Yeah, just, I, yeah, just anyone kind of caught your eye, any of these young guys? Uh, yeah, um, yeah, you know, I think there's some young guys on the defensive line got a chance to, to push uh, for playing time. Um, you know, I think where they're at today, where they're going to be week one, you know, there should be a dramatic change in, in what they're in how they're playing, right? But I think as you evolve and move through the season, injuries ultimately happen. Those guys got to continue to grow and develop and mature, um, and they will have roles. You know, what I mean, that's defense, that's offense, and special teams. Coach, so as far as the quarterback situation goes, yeah. do you have a timeline of when you want? To when someone when someone takes a hold of it and truly defines that he's the guy, uh, it. Uh, you know, be great to name a guy now, uh, but you never name him before he takes ownership of the job. He's got to go out and prove it in front of the, the 10 other guys, but really the other 109 guys here in camp that he's the guy. I think that's important that they go through that process. And that could be into the season. Could, I, I'm not going to put a timetable on it. Um, you know, we'll name us. Uh, there will be a starter, you know, week one. Someone's going to run out there with the ones uh, for a snap on, of the offensive player of the year. That might probably safe to expect that when one quarterback could get some snaps in the game. Nah, I, don't, I don't think it's fair to say anything right now other than uh, we got a competition. They're going to continue to grow, hopefully limit the number of stakes that they make every day, get better, um, become a really sound decision maker, and, uh, and be really accurate with the football. You put all those things together uh, with athleticism and the skill set that we have uh, on the offense side of the ball, plus some, uh, the maturity that we have up front, I think we've got a chance to be pretty explosive. What has Hayden provided for this team uh, and then that quarterback room? Um, Coach Hayden, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's he's been great for those guys. Um, you know, all spring long, he's been a great soundboard. He he understands the technique that we want to play with at the position. Um, coaches it up right now during training camp, but you know, you go back through the summer. I think he did a great job help mold, helping to mold those guys as well. Just for, through, through these first time practices, have there been? 
couple of guys who have really made leaps and bounds just in these last, just in these nine practices this fall that have really stuck out to you. I, I think um, Noah Hancock, uh, defensive lineman, day one, where he started and where he is growing. Um, you know, he can't stop here, right? You can't hit the wall in the middle of training camp. I think, you know, on the defensive line side of it, his size, his speed, those are things that, that are starting to flash. Landon Woodson uh, on the defensive line coming back off of an injury. You know, last year probably thought he was going to play some snaps for us. He was injured, uh, you know, day three of training camp and uh, um, has came back. He's healthy. He's playing with speed and uh, a guy that I think can, can help us. Thanks. You can do that.